Thanks for listening to Car Talk. You know, NPR has a great new way for you to get the news each morning, a podcast called Up First. Give them 10 minutes and you'll find out the big stories and big ideas of the day. It's the stuff you really need to know and why it matters. Start your day with Up First weekday mornings by 6 a.m. Eastern Time on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Hello and welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers. We're broadcasting this week from the Deductive Reasoning Center here at Car Talk Plaza. Well, it has to do Explain with... Explain me. Here's what it is. It has to do with the research, especially having to do with food, health, and all that stuff. Uh-huh. You know, one day eggs are bad, the next day eggs are good. Coffee's good, coffee's bad, wine no, wine yes. Hot fudge Sundays. Hot fudge been a ruling on them They've <laughs> always been okay. But here, here this, this sort of explains it. Uh, Who did it come from? We don't know who it came from. Here it is what it says. The Japanese eat very little fat and suffer fewer heart attacks than the British or Americans. On the other hand, the French eat a lot of fat, and they also suffer fewer heart attacks than the British or Americans. The Japanese drink very little red wine and suffer fewer heart attacks than the British or Americans. The Italians drink excessive amounts of red wine and also suffer fewer heart attacks than the British or Americans. Mm-hmm. Conclusion, eat and drink whatever you want. It's speaking <laughs> English that's killing you. <laughs> All right. Is that deductive reasoning or well, what? he's close. Yeah. It's living here. <laughs> yeah. That's doing it. It is living here because we're so into making money. Well, I, I want to know how the French... I, I have a brother-in-law who, who lives in France and uh, is married to a French woman. And uh, she gets like, I don't know, 18, 19 weeks of vacation every year. <laughs> yeah. So whenever we call their house, they're we, on, they're we get away. the answering machine, and they call us like five or six days later. Oh, we were in the yeah. Alps, and oh, we were in Ireland. Or... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only that, but they have places built into their infrastructure to hang out, like coffee shops. Yes. We don't have coffee shops. I mean, we have no, we have drive-up windows. Drive-up windows. Don't even get out of your car. Don't, we don't want you out of the car. Get your stuff and get, get the stuff. hell out. Get out of here. And, and no place to just sit down and yeah. do nothing. And yeah. if you do go in some place and sit down and do nothing, they're they, on your case. They arrest you for loitering. Can I help you? Is that it? You're all done? Would you like to see the dessert menu? I just had the dessert. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. We we're crazy. Yeah, well, it's it's us. It's not it the is. diet. It's not the wine. It's not the fish. It's, it's the stress, it's, man. It's, it's in. It's the stress. Well, you can see it in us, and no one knows it more than us. I. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you have stress in your life and you'd like help, give us a call. The number is eight 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 Car Talk. Especially if that stress is coming from your car. That's eight eight eight. Listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Ellen in Brookline, Massachusetts. Thanks for taking my hey, call. Hey, Ellen, Brookline, Massachusetts. We so seldom get calls from Massachusetts. <laughs> I know. I could practically yell out my window to you guys, and you could answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't own a car, but my parents very generously loan us their car when they go away for the winter, which mm. is great. Um, and they came home recently for a few days, and I handed my dad his car keys on my key ring, and he was just aghast. He told me I had so many keys on my key ring that, that you were I going said, to wear out his ignition switch. Well, he said I was going to rip out the ignition from ah, so many keys. Wear out, rip out, same, yeah. same thing. Yeah. And I had this awful picture of, you know, where you put the key in just falling out. <laughs> and all kinds of sinew attached to it, right? Because it's, it's, yeah, it's all a, these it's wires a living, hanging breathing down. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I took the keys, you know, I separated them immediately because it's his car. And if he wants me to, you know, stand on my head before I get in, I will. But uh, is that true? What kind of a car is it? It makes a difference, you know. It's a Chevy Malibu, and they were really nice. They got it in November and left in December and still left it to us tomorrow. It was really nice of them. And here's the other question. When you put the key in the ignition and Mm -hmm. you're sitting there in the driver's seat, Mm -hmm. do the keys rest on your knee? (laughs) No. It's it's not that many in my opinion, but, I mean, it doesn't look like the school janitor's key. If you put these in your pocket, would you walk with a limp? (laughs) (laughs) Well, no. I mean, I counted. I have nine keys. Nine keys. That's a lot of that's, keys. That's a lot. That's a lot of keys. I think you're probably on the borderline. Yeah, uh-huh, okay. I think the limit is ten, depending on how big the keys are. But your, uh, your father is theoretically and technically correct. Ooh, that's a shocker, huh? 
He'll be ha- he'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> That's a shocker, isn't it? Oh, well, we've seen many a case where, where a, a large number of keys on a key ring will wear out an ignition switch. Good thing I separated them, huh? <laughs> it's like a good yeah, one. It's too late. In deep trouble. When they got back and their car didn't start, who would they blame? <laughs> Ellen. Well, the fact that you've only done it for a few months and you will never do it again. No, that is true. <laughs> Uh, probably means you're saved. But at the same time, you can tell your father that he was probably right to go flying off the handle like but that. But the first time that you lock the keys in the car, you'll <laughs> abandon this whole idea. <laughs> All right, good point. All right, well, thanks so much for the answer. I appreciate it. All right, Ellen. my dad. Thanks for thanks your call. For calling. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, One, uh, that was short and sweet. Hey, she got her answer. Oh, she was. Yeah, go on. She didn't have to waste any time talking to us. No One small talk. 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. And we didn't have to waste the time asking her, where's Brooklyn? Where's Brooklyn, Massachusetts? The the what do you do for a living? Right. Yeah. All, all that unnecessary. Her name was so just what, Ellen. What the weather's yeah. like. The I was going to ask. The weather's the same there as what? The weather's the same here. Yeah. Ellen has got two L's and two E's. <laughs> and, I mean, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, how you doing? Good. Great. Who's this? This is Ken from Berkeley. Hi, Ken from Berkeley. Berkeley. What's, What's the happened? weather in Berkeley? The weather's fantastic. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is this time of See, year. See, but Berkeley's got places to hang out. That's because it's students, and they ain't got nothing to do, man. <laughs> nice I mean, spend their parents' are, <laughs> money. <laughs> classes are irrelevant. It's interesting that students know what to do. They know how to hang out. Actually, I'm a graduate student and a teacher, so I've got uh, about 250 students that are waiting for me later on this week to give them a lecture, and I hope that they're paying some hey, attention. Hey, they'll, they'll wait all day. You don't show up, they'll just sit there and shoot the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll have, order a pizza to come <laughs> like Sean Penn did. <laughs> so what's up, Ken? I've got a mystery. I have a 1991 Saab 9000, and the mystery is, why was I so stupid to buy this car? <laughs> it's putting you in the poorhouse? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Are you over 40? You don't sound it. No. Do you ever smoke a pipe? No. No. Do you ever have a jacket with the with the leather patches on the elbows? No, definitely not. No, no, that's a Northeastern thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was a sob thing. Oh, it, and sob, but only sob, only a sob thing if in you live the in the northeast. Yeah, if you live. In, okay, <laughs> you ever have an Hawaiian shirt with patches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <both. laughs> All right, I so, like it. so go ahead. Okay, so it drinks clutch fluid. I, I put clutch fluid in, and I drive it, and it can only go for about twenty uses of the clutch, uh-huh. and then it's gone. Oh, uh-huh. and so how long has it been doing this? About ten gallons worth? It's been doing it for about ten months. <laughs> you and, need to go and, and, and you well, don't, don't sit me just ask what conclusion did you reach after like the second or third month that he couldn't he couldn't find the leak well here's the thing I took it into the shop oh you did do something oh they told him it was the clutch master, master. no slave exactly cylinder exactly the master they replaced the master cylinder no, they, no that wasn't it they, they checked the slave cylinder and they said it was dry and they told me that they thought that a little piece of hose had disintegrated and it was somewhere in the line and if i just kept on using it and just kept on filling it up that over the course of time that little piece of hose that was stuck in there would disintegrate also and the problem man that's the most bogus thing i've ever heard (laughs) so they they replaced the master cylinder and that didn't fix it no yeah so this fortunately you've solved the mystery because it's the only other thing it could be which is the slave cylinder and if i'm not mistaken that slave cylinder is part of the clutch release bearing, which means you've got to take the transmission out to re- replace it. Now, the thing is, the, the slave cylinder isn't that old. These guys had replaced it about a year and a half before that, maybe two years. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and, they, and, they, uh, and they bear no responsibility for this uh, most recent catastrophe? Well, they claim it's the hose. <laughs> hmm. I, I don't see how the hose... <laughs> I don't understand the hose theory at all. Huh. But I'm but I'm okay. I'm interested in learning because it may come in handy someday. <laughs> so they so, they think that the ho- a piece of the hose is in there and that's causing the leak. Yeah, yeah, there's somewhere stuck in the slave cylinder. Oh, so. I I his I got it. I got it. They think that this piece of hose is somehow interfering with the seal in the slave cylinder. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, so that, that so that fluid is getting past it. Another way, imagine if you will that there's a seal inside the cylinder, which is the slave cylinder, and this piece of hose is lodged between the wall of the slave cylinder and the seal. Yeah. Mm. Much like a pencil would be in there. So when the the piston moves... When the piston moves, the fluid just comes pouring pouring out. Exactly. But if that were the case, 
you would certainly see fluid on the ground. You could make it leak by just stepping on the clutch. Well, he, he is to the tune of about a quarter week. No, but why he, didn't the shop do that? Oh, they didn't. Uh, who knows? But th- no, th- these guys, I, I don't buy the, the, the piece of hose theory. I no, think I don't either. I think that's bogus. I think you got a defective slave cylinder and they have to replace it. And, Especially if you step on the clutch 20 times and you're empty. Yeah, and I would, I, I would, I would argue uh, that they should split the cost. Okay. First, ask them how much it's going to cost you. When they tell you it's nine hundred dollars, say fine, I'll give you four fifty. You do it. Yeah, because if you tell them first that you want it to be half of it, they'll say it's eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Good luck, Ken. <laughs> Thanks very much. Good luck. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 double two seventy eight two fifty five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Wait, we didn't answer his question. Why was he so stupid as to ha- Never mind. That wasn't his question. <laughs> Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello. Hi, this is Susanna in Missoula, Montana. Su- Susanna. With a Z or an S? With an S, two N's, and an H. H. And the H. You have the H. I'm, I'm the longest way my mother could possibly spell it. Wow. Susanna from Montana. Isn't that nice that it rhymes? That's good. Can it you is. spell Montana with an H on the end, too? Why not? <laughs> I teach up? middle school, so I often see that happen. <laughs> so middle school is what six seven eight seven eight nine six seven eight six seven eight the finest young people you'd ever want to meet no they're not are you kidding I, I taught two of those grades you did yeah they I, they wanted to kill him he, he wanted to no, kill them I, I had first dips <laughs> <laughs> this explains so much about you yeah, does it doesn't it it really does you've been scarred <laughs> And I grieve with you. Teacher abuse. Well, I'll tell it's you, true. Uh, and I don't mean this, I don't know how, how, I, don't know how I, I mean I know what this. you're going to say, too. Say it. Just come out and say it. Everyone hates you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you got nothing to lose. I, okay. <laughs> then I'll make a clean breast of it. I hated the girls. Oh, they are the meanest people. The girls they? were the worst. They absolutely were. I mean, the, the boys you could reason with. Well, and you could slap them around a little bit. That's, I was going to say, that's the only reasoning they hear. So is it true for you, too, that the girls are worse to deal with? I mean, maybe it was just my male perspective, obviously, that made it. I think that's part of it, and I think part of it is people just don't call girls on it often enough and say, listen, do you know what you look like when you make that face, rolling your eyes and sighing at the same time? <laughs> But they were mean. And they were mean to the teachers. Oh, they're mean to they each other. They were mean to the boys, and they were mean to each other. It's brutal. They're brutal. They are the most, the cruelest creatures known to man. And that's why I love them. Oh, oh, oh. You, so you're on a mission. I am. I'm sort of a. I. I. I well, you know, you were there. You have to be. Happy I was there, but I escaped. <laughs> 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 I climbed the fence. So anyway, uh, how may we help you? I in, think in... jumping in your car and dashing off while a hundred kids running after you with flaming <laughs> torches is not escaping. <laughs> well, if if I'm going to make my big escape, I need a clear windshield, and my problem is, I have a Corolla wagon, and what I have is really lacking pressure in my reservoir for my wiper fluid. Ah. So instead of getting a nice squirt, I get a little ah. It goes about four inches up on the windshield and then I'm yeah. I'm sadly disappointed in my fluid. So we <laughs> we pressed the little button and found where the puddle ends up. Ah. It's over on the passenger side. Yeah. And we had the hood up, so we kind of figured it. the hose wasn't where we could get to it very easily. But yeah, it was hose, leaking out of the hose? It must Somewhere be, along yeah. the, the way. The hose runs. If you're facing, if you're standing in front of the car, facing the car with the hood open, mm-hmm. the it's bottom on the is left. the left corner, the left front. Yeah. Closest to the headlight. Yes. Okay. And the, the hose, I believe, runs from there up over the plastic fender liner, which you can gain access to by uh, touching the area above the tire. Uh-huh. So you need to find the beginning of the hose, which is at the where the pump is. Mm-hmm. Okay, then the pump is at the bottom of that bottle. Okay. And then that hose runs along the above the fender liner and connects to a T connector where it allows some of with a, with a T connector allows some of it to go to the left washer nozzle and some to go to the right. But before it gets to that T connector, 
the hose has got a crack in it. So it's before the T-connector? Yeah, it's a simple Sounds matter like it. Yeah. of removing the headlight and the fender and the hood, and you'll have the new hose in there in no <laughs> time. Oh, is that all? <laughs> no, no, no. I, you, can, you can gain access to it pretty easily, I think. By In fact, you don't have to even run the hose where the old one was. You can just run a new hose. You think I could find a middle schooler who hotwires cars that could do this? Yes. No, you, this is within your grasp, Susanna. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Follow the hose, and mm-hmm. as soon as you have two ends of it, just buy another piece of hose and connect it yeah. to the same two ends, and you're all, you're home free. You'll go to the auto parts store and ask them for buy three or four feet of windshield washer hose. And I will be just the envy of all I know. Yeah, I'm sure. Having had first your advice and then a successful experience fixing something. Yeah, that'll be what great. What could be better? What could be better? Well, Suzanne, a I couple can tell of days off from those little animals. You'll <laughs> succeed. You're, you're a courageous person, more oh. courageous than I was. I don't know if more courageous or uh, less proactive about moving on. <laughs> How long have you been at this? Eight years. Yeah. You're ready for the home. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. I'd say you've done your term, kiddo. Thank you for all your wise advice. <laughs> See you, Susanna. See you later. Bye-bye. That's got to be, that's gotta be hell. I mean, you don't just have one or two of them like you have at home. You got a room full of them. Oh yeah. No, I, and I, you I... can't hit them. That's the worst part. <laughs> you know, but um... there were no prohibitions about tying them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the duct tape seemed to work good. <laughs> okay, look, to... it's time to take a break. But when we come back, I'll have the answer to last week's murder mystery puzzler. Ooh, a mystery. I love mysteries. You know? Oh, yeah, I know. Like how to find both of your butt cheeks in the show. <laughs> You're still working on that one, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, we'll be back in a minute. Even though Martha Stewart flings a hand-painted Easter egg at her radio (laughs) whenever she hears us say it, this is NPR. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Tire Rack. Now, if you're like me and you own a car, you've probably done something dumb to it. Like the time I ran out of oil and used a quarter Filippo Berrio extra virgin olive oil as a substitute. Well, Tire Rack makes it easy to be smart when it comes to your tires. At TireRack.com. You can look up the correct tires for your car and pick the best ones based on ratings and reviews. Plus, your new tires can be delivered in as little as one business day to a recommended local installer. So even if you forget to release the parking brake or send your brother's 65 AMC ambassador to the crusher, you can still redeem yourself by getting the right tires. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install, smarter. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and uh, the mm. answer to last week's puzzler. You listening? No, I was actually reading mail, but you go ahead. No. <laughs> an off-duty policeman is working as a night watchman in an office building. Yeah. He's making his rounds, and he comes upon a closed door. Mm. Behind the door, he hears voices, raised voices. An argument seems to be taking place. Yeah. He hears someone say, no, Frank, no, don't do it, Frank, no. Followed by three gunshots. Bang, bang, (laughs) bang. (laughs) And a thud. Yeah. The night watchman, a.k.a. policeman, barges through the door and finds the following. A dead guy on the floor, Uh not breathing. A smoking gun. (laughs) On the floor also. Also on the floor. Yeah. And three people in the room, alive and breathing. Yeah. A minister, a doctor, and a plumber. Yeah. He walks over to the minister Mm -hmm. and arrests him. How did he know the minister did it? And he didn't have on one of those badges that says, Hi, my (laughs) my name is Frank. (laughs) Have a nice day. (laughs) 
with a smiley face. <laughs> the answer is only one of them could have been named Frank because the other two, the plumber and what was the other one? The doctor. The doctor. Were women. I was married to a Frank once. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go there. Who's our winner this week, Tommy? Our winner today is Frank. <laughs> no, our winner is Robert Mandela from Dothan, Alabama. And for having his answer selected at random from among those thousands of correct answers that we got this week, Robert is going to get the usual, a $25 gift certificate to the Car Talk Shameless Commerce Division. And what a great gift this is. You Good can. work, Robert. We'll have a new puzzler. And I've got a you know a bunch of puzzles in the mix right now. Yes. And I don't know what's going to emerge. No. Either, either it'll be good, interesting, yeah. And I lousy, have some ideas for folkloric, you. Folkloric, historic. I've got some ideas for and you. And that'll for be coming puzzlers. up later in today's show. In the meantime, we'll take your calls at 1 888 Car Talk. That's 888 227 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Chris from Brainerd, Minnesota. Hi, Chris. Chris from where? Brainerd? Brainerd, Minnesota. About two hours north of Minneapolis. Oh, man. So is this like inside the Arctic Circle? <laughs> <laughs> so you're calling about your sled dog or what? Oh, uh, my snowmobile, actually. My snowmobile. snowmobile? Really? No. No, oh, well, this guy. <laughs> well, I am calling because uh, Minnesota probably is one of the best places in the nation as far as keeping the roads uh, free and clear of snow and ice. Yeah, they plow well, huh? And they use a lot of and salt. They use a lot of salt yeah. and pepper. A lot of salt. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. And I have a Toyota Camry. Now, I thought there was a little speck of rust appearing, so I thought the you know, best thing to do would be to uh, get out my Dremel tool, grind out a little bit bigger sp- spot than where the little teeny rust speck was, and then cover it with some touch-up paint. And now you've got now you've removed both rear fenders, right? <laughs> a little at a time. <laughs> well, no, I I did this right before you know the winter and put a coat of wax on on top of my handy job to make sure you know it was more protected. And then we started getting the salt and the snow and stuff, and the thing exploded. It was like cancer. Rust appeared all over the place. Yeah. Oh, so you just ground it down till it was pretty much shiny metal, mm-hmm. and you waxed it. Well, I put some touch-up the touch-up oh, paint touch up paint. the car. Yeah. And then I waxed it. Did you put a primer on it first? Uh, no. no. That was one. That was mistake one. Oh, you didn't. You just put the touch-up paint right on the bare metal. Yeah. That was wrong. Okay. From my many years' experience in body work. Okay. About an hour. <laughs> 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 I did learn that you got to put primer on. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 got to go back and do it again. And if okay. you teach English, you can even call it primer. <laughs> Doesn't matter to us. <laughs> but, but you've got to grind it down so it's bare metal. There are also lots of products, I think, on the market that are designed to yeah. slow down the advancement of rust. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, like Rust-Oleum, for example. Okay. Yeah, and there's this other stuff called Extend. Okay. I like Extend. Extend actually has a product which is supposed to do all the stuff that the Dremel tool does. You just really? paint it on, and it gets rid of all the junk. Wow. If they have one now, that you just add to the gas tank. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't yeah, while you sleep. <laughs> so, so you could try one of those things. Okay. The bottom line is that you, you're on a slippery slope, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, once it starts, I mean, you'll be out there every weekend doing this. You'll have no social life. <laughs> Your girlfriend's going to dump you because you're going to be out there in the curb you're fixing all these rust spots. So you're going to have to bite the bullet but at some it'll point be fun. and buy another car. Well, I got two things to say. One is, if if there's rust on the fenders, it would be not a bad idea to either crawl under the car yourself or have your mechanic take a look underneath to see if any of the structural pieces are also rusty. Ah, good point. That would be a good thing to do because the car might be ready to fall apart. And the next thing is, what do you do with your Dremel tool? I recently bought a Dremel tool, (laughs) and I can't find a single thing... To do with it. He keeps asking me if I have any cavities. <laughs> I mean, I'm afraid if I fall asleep in his house, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to wake up and I'm going to Well, here's what happened to me. First of all, it just seemed like a wonderful tool to have. Right. And I ran out. You can drill shape sand. or You or... can drill shape sand and grave route. You name it, you can do it. Right. Except I don't have any need to do any of those things. So I decided I would do some, like, project hobby things but i can't get interested in i mean how many birdhouses can you make <laughs> so i decided the problem was i didn't have enough 
accessories. So now <laughs> I'm buying accessories, which I also don't know. What I bought, for example, the router table. Did you really? What's the route? <laughs> well, you, you, you're gonna, you, I thought it was going to show me how to get places. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna, I can see you're going to make a Lloyd Law style Gibson mandolin. Well, see, every time I buy an accessory, I realize that I'm not doing anything with it because I don't have some other accessory. My late, latest, I'm saving up now for the scroll saw. Do you have the mandolin maker? <laughs> <laughs> you need you got that man. They, you can't make a mandolin. They have. I even go to their website. They have all these little hobby things to make. The stupidest. How to make a little rolling toy for your grandchildren? The hell with my grandchildren. Let them get their own rolling toys. I'm not gonna spend my life making little rolling toys. No. I'd, I'd start working on a walker for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but so what do you do with yours is my question, Chris. It is, it's, it's one of the, it actually is, it does have to be one of those tools. It looks great in the TV ads, but yeah. once you take it home, it's not that uh, useful. I well, mean, that's I, what my I, problem is, too. <laughs> I think it's because I don't have the scroll saw. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just curious. Thanks, um, for, uh, thanks for telling me that you agree with me. <laughs> and get the underside checked out because you may be in the market for a new car. And why would you want to waste every weekend drummling if you could be driving around? <laughs> drummling. <laughs> Something new. I've been so, drummling. See you, Chris. All right. Thank you very much. one <laughs> car talk or one 227 8255 Hello. You're on Car Talk. Hi. This is Laurie in Hilo. Laurie. Laurie in Hilo. What's that? Nebra- yeah. Hilo- oh, yeah. Stop it. Hilo, Nebraska? Yeah. Hilo, Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Hilo, yeah. we know where it is. <laughs> What's up, Laurie? I have a Nissan Pathfinder that we have had to name Wobble Butt. Wobble Butt. Really? I love it. It's a four wheel drive car, and yeah. um, it's off road maybe eight hours a week. And driving along the road, it feels like the back wheels of the car drive over the wake of a boat. And it sets up this rock in the rear end. And the roll in the rear end kind of causes a complimentary yaw in the front end. So the back end is like uh, uh, moving from side to side? Right. Like a giant finger has come out of the sky and just pushed on the side of the car. And then that kind of makes it feel like it's fishtailing as well. Got it. Got okay, it. Okay, excellent. When was the accident? There was no accident. Oh, yes, there was. No, no, there wasn't. Well, there, maybe I'll, I'll take that back. When was the incident? I've never hit anything. I've had the car for three years. Yeah. And this started in June. Right. There hasn't been an incident, but you have bought tires. Well, okay. I replaced the shocks and the strut at the dealership, and they aligned the wheels. Mm. And that didn't solve the problem. But you hadn't bought tires prior to it? Not prior to that. There and goes then, that theory. Yeah, it shoots, then, uh, shoots, shoots that out of the water. Shoots that theory right away. Okay. Since then, I have purchased tires and had the wheels aligned again. And nothing has helped. No. In fact, it's getting worse. It's degenerating. I love it. If if you if you were to drive it at high speed, like sixty. Yep. Does it shake to beat the band? I mean, is it? No. It doesn't. No. But but whatever wobble. Increases in frequency from a thirty mile an hour trip. Well, it doesn't. It does. It's never happened below about forty miles an hour. What's the frequency of the wobble at forty miles an hour? The frequency of the wobble, boy, that's hard to figure out. Yeah. Well, I mean, in if other it's words, going back and forth, is it going? Bup, 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 bup? That's a little slower than that. Maybe, maybe, maybe like that. And if you slow down, it stops. And, and what happens, how is it at 60 miles? If it's boop, 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 boop at 40, what's it like at 60? Boop, it's boop, kind of boop, the boop, same. Boop, kind of the same. Boop, boop, it's boop, kind of the boop. same. You haven't had an accident. You you, no. you you swear to that. No, I swear. You it's, need a I, good accident. <laughs> <laughs> and you've replaced all four struts? Well, no, it has it has yeah. regular shocks in the in shocks it and has, struts. It has regular shocks in the rear and struts and shocks in the front, and and I replaced all of that. Yeah, and it, oh, it isn't that. It is something like... Uh, a broken or a loose spring shackle, a bent axle flange, a seized universal joint. I like universal joint. I felt... I've, you know, I've always had a thing for universal <laughs> joints myself. Have I told you about this? When, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> the only trouble with that is it would change when you're going faster. Yeah, and well, I, I think Laurie's just misrepresenting. I think she's lying, I think she's lying yeah. 
<laughs> well, no, I, mean, I, I will tell you that people, and we've been dealing, we've been dealing with customers who have had to explain the same kinds of things to us for more than a quarter of a century, and people are woefully inadequate at explaining things, yeah. especially when it comes to frequency and you know, right. and, and well, like, so. I'm not to say that you, you're not good at it, but I think you are, and you may be 100 percent right, and and we're very accustomed to being 100 percent wrong, but I think that it could easily be something like a bent axle. And these would be things that would get overlooked. And I, I would have somebody take out the the rear drive shaft, the drive really? shaft that goes to the back wheels, and see if that universal joint is seized. That sounds really expensive. N- no, well, not to, well, not to take it out and look. You think maybe it would be better just to buy it a grass skirt, you know, so from <laughs> Hawaii. And... You know, I, I would get it looked at because it could be dangerous. If the, if the universal joint or one of the joints is seized, then, in fact, it could lead to uh, the drive shaft falling out. That's not pretty. That would be really unfortunate. Yeah, so, and it's cheap to have somebody look. They can unbolt that drive shaft in five minutes. Really? Yeah, and have them, have them check the axle flanges, too, to see if an axle isn't bent in the rear. Okay. Good luck. Thanks a lot. All right, see you, Laurie. Because Bye. she does drive it off-road. Mm. You have to consider. I did consider. That's why I asked her when the incident was. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened. But I still have a feeling we're missing something. You know what we're missing? <laughs> the, the right answer. Right answer. <laughs> one eight 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 car talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Sean from Seattle. Hi, Sean. Sean, how how are we gonna spell that one? S H A W N. Oh, all right. I had already misspelled really? it. Really? Uh, everyone does. Yeah. But anyway, uh Seattle. Yeah. Got it. What's up? So um I've got a Volkswagen Scirocco, mm. and whenever I drive over 45 miles an hour, the dashboard screams at me. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like a big, Wah! Yeah. And, and I can't hear the radio, I can't talk over it, and it's really distracting, and I can't go on the highway. Uh, open the hood. Uh-huh. You, you, in, you, you with the car now? You don't. No. Have, you have the car with you at all times. <laughs> <laughs> if you open the hood, I believe <clears throat> you will see... A speedometer cable, which is about, uh, I don't know, maybe three-eighths of an inch in diameter and black. Okay. This cable is pointing right at where the speedometer would be okay. in- inside, inside the, the car. car. Okay. If you follow that cable and, and you'll kind of come across another piece of plastic, which you may have to move out of the way, I think you'll come to a little black box. Okay. Unscrew the cable from that box. The okay. noise will be gone. Speedometer work. And your speedometer will be gone too. Uh, <laughs> but you'll but have ascertained. Yeah. But the, I think I think it's more the odometer than the speedometer. Well, they, 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 you they're can't together. have you can't have one they're without together, the other. Really. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you disconnect the cable, you are going to determine that that's where the noise is coming from. Now you can, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this car may have a long cable, and then a little short cable. Okay. And it could be either one of them that's making the noise. And I'm, I'm going to guess it's the short cable. Okay. And you can go to your Volkswagen dealer, and you can buy one and and put it in. Okay. There's And there's no way of, of just making the uh, the noise stop and keep the speedometer. I'll have to do all this stuff. Mm, mm, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, but at least in the meantime, you won't have to, you, you won't, A, you won't have to listen to the noise anymore, and you won't be incurring high mileage numbers on your odometer. Well, well, my odometer is broken anyway. So. Oh, the odometer is already. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. It hasn't worked since I've owned the car. Oh, but the speedometer works. Yes, the speedometer has always worked. There the you go. You can works. have one without the <laughs> other. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, by the way, it, it's it's illegal to drive around without a speedometer. I don't care. They arrest Sean in Seattle. What's it to us? Yeah, go for it, man. Go for Power it. Power to the people. Just leave us alone. Leave us out of the story. I was I was once pulled over by a very nice uh, state police woman. Yeah? For, for speeding. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And? Well, it was a trumped-up charge, of course. <laughs> but but uh, I, I informed her, as everyone does. That your speedometer didn't that my work. Sp- no, it worked, but I, I couldn't possibly have been going 78 miles an hour. My speedometer <laughs> said I was doing 55. And she said, well, I'm ready to go up for 78 and for faulty equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so, uh, Good for her. Yeah, so if you do get stopped for speeding, I don't think I'd use the excuse that your okay. speedometer doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. See you, Sean. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, it's time to take a short break. Ah, uh, I know. You have to put the finishing touches 
on that new puzzle, don't you? Well, if you consider the question and the answer, the finishing touches, <laughs> then, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. And that's, I guess that's all that's left to do. Great. We'll be back in a minute. In my grandpa, they didn't drive a Chevrolet. You wouldn't waste the money on a caddy. Had a stain ain't built behind the road and asked to grill. And later on, so did my daddy. With my daddy on the ground, it was all the same. Used to spend a lot of time in the past. Today, feel it for me is nothing but a pale imitation. You got to the same, but got you by having you. Man, you gotta be kidding. If there's a reason I'm late, then I'm sorry to say it's because it took me out of you. We got the boat away. And even though jurors everywhere beg to be sequestered whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. Support for Car Talk and the following message comes from ZipRecruiter. When you own a business, if you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can. Thanks to ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100-plus job sites with one single click and have the highest chance of finding that perfect candidate. Plus, you can instantly be matched to candidates from over 6 million resumes. Businesses of all sizes have used ZipRecruiter. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash car talk. NPR is a new daily show inspired by the First Amendment. It's called 1A, and it features great guests and debates about the news to help you think and engage. Check out 1A with Joshua Johnson from WAMU and NPR on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the the new puzzler. I can hardly wait. Well, I, I, I'm encouraged that you didn't go bogus over the last week's puzzler. and, and No, uh, no. Well, well, his, that wasn't bogus. Here's another cheat. You can go bogus this week if you uh, want. Is this part of the guy goes into a convenience store series? No, 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 no. This is the... Uh, World War II series? No, this is Rising Floodwater series. <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead. A family of four and their dog are trapped on an island. Oh, one of these. What? You're going to like it. When rising floodwaters tear out the bridge that they had used just a few hours before. So they're on this little island and they can't get back. And they got one little rowboat and a light. <laughs> <laughs> they got no stinking light. <laughs> Frantically, they search for some means of crossing. Of course, they find nothing. And then finally, when they had just given up hope, the son says, I've got a boat, a small boat and oars. They gather around, but their joy was short-lived because the manufacturer's instructions printed on the boat stern tell them that the boat can carry 180 pounds. That's it. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank God grandma is with them. <laughs> well, the mother-in-law's not around. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there's mom, dad, and the two kids. Is that it? You're and gonna... the dog. And oh. the dog's the only one who can swim. <laughs> Yeah. And the boat can carry 180 pounds. Got it. I'm writing this down. The father weighs 170. Mm -hmm. The mother says she weighs 130, but I think it's more like 155, actually. (laughs) The son is 90 pounds. The daughter is 80. And the dog is 15. But the dog can swim. But the dog can swim. The dog is going to have to (laughs) take the boat back and forth. (laughs) Is there any way in which the family can be saved? And, and, and of course, we know that they can be saved because other, we would never give a puzzle that didn't have a happy ending. Yeah. How could they be saved? And what's the fewest number of crossings? Yeah, to if, save everybody. To save everyone. Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on a postcard or on the back of a $20 bill and send it to... What happened to the... 10 inch reflector telescope <laughs> thing. I mean, it was hopeless. It was what? hopeless. I'm telling you, shoot for 20 bucks. Don't over, don't over, over stretch. Jeez. I, I, 20 bucks is good. If we could only get 20s, we'd be good. If we had enough 20s, we could buy a telescope. <laughs> Send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge, Our Fair City, Ma 02238. Or you can email your answer to us, of course, from cartalk.com. Right now, if you have a question about your car or anything else, the mm. number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 
727-825-5. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, I'm Christina, and I just uh, moved here with my husband. Here is North Carolina at Heavenly Mountain from California, and we have a 96 Toyota Land Cruiser. Wait a minute, from California, so that means you spell Christina with a K? No! <laughs> C-H. C-H. And, yeah. and you live on Heavenly Mountain? Heavenly Mountain oh, in North God, Carolina. I mean, could there be a better place on Earth? Oh, God, no. And today is the singularly most beautiful day I've have ever had in my life. How long mm-hmm. have you been there? A week? <laughs> <laughs> just, just pulled in last night. <laughs> no. Really, it's the most singularly beautiful day Ever. Wow, I mean, that's that's quite a thing. I thought about that earlier, driving uh, around. First of all, we had the Blue Ridge Parkway, and there are no commercial vehicles and no uh, signs. Oh, the Blue Ridge Parkway is beautiful. Gorgeous. Isn't it? And the clouds are these big white clouds, and the wind is blowing, and, and the cows are out, and the grass is green, and the wind's going through. The, oh, it's just gorgeous. It's heavenly. it's heavenly. Why did you move from California to North Carolina? To be at Heavenly Mountain. <laughs> Excellent idea. Yeah, well, it sounds like a good idea to me. They're the oldest mountains in the world, and some of these roads are the oldest uh, probably ever made. Who told you that? Carl Sagan? You know. <laughs> the oldest mountains in the world. In the oldest, world. Oldest mountains in the world, they are. Not that it really matters. Yeah, but says who? That's very old. And the second oldest river in the world is called the New River. The new river, the good name. Yeah. That's, like, yeah. that's like the guy who's taking this course about geology and stuff, and the teacher says, does anyone know how old the Amazon River is? And the guy in the back raises his hand, and he says, yes, sir, I know. It's one billion and three years old. The teacher says, how did you come up with that number? He says, well, I flunked this course the last time I took it three years ago, <laughs> right. at which time the teacher said it was a billion years old. <laughs> There you well, go. That's what these mountains are. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Christina, what, what are you driving? So we're driving a 96 Toyota Land Cruiser, which you think would be perfect for here. But yeah. The, you know, the roads are narrow because they were made when the cars weren't so big. Good. And it's pretty precision driving on these mountain roads. I'm telling you, there's no room for error. Yes, I know. First, we learned you have to tie everything down in the car or it comes and hits you. Uh, and the second thing that happened is on a left curve... The doors would all unlock on their own. And then... Unlock, but not open. Yes, unlock. And then the light overhead, the inside light, started to flash on these curves. Not all the time. None of this happens all the time. Right. You, you can't, like, gear up for it. Right. And uh, one night part, uh, we don't have a sensor alarm. Uh, the alarm went off just on its own. No wind, you know, no... The car was parked outside. Parked outside, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, <laughs> does, doesn't anyone screen these calls? <laughs> Come on, what is this? Well, uh, let's go like back it. to let you say on left-hand turns. Yeah, left left curves. Uh, left curves. Curves. Yeah. The doors will unlock. Yeah. Uh, if you're driving this thing and you were to open the door, let's say the doors were all locked while you're driving. If yeah. you were to open the door, would the other doors automatically unlock, or does that you have to unlock them manually? No, they all uh, unlock. Yeah. When you stop the car with all the doors locked, yeah. how do you get out? If you just open one of the doors? Well, if you stop the car and turn it off, they unlock. But if you don't turn it off, you have to push the button that unlocks, and they all unlock. They all unlock. Okay, yeah. so what's happening is uh, somehow or another, one of the passenger doors Passenger door is is, uh, is loose. Is loose. Yeah, it's not latched properly, oh. and and as a result of that, it's causing the the uh, uh, the light to flicker, and it's also making the doors open up because it's like you opened the door while you were driving. Try this. Oh yeah. Here's what you do. Okay. You start up the car. Yeah. You have a second key, right? So you can lock the. You can close the door, leave the engine running. Yeah. And get out. So now everything's locked. All right, now go in the house and put on a pot of coffee. Because <laughs> this may take time. And then you go around to the passenger side doors. Yeah. And you pull on one of them. How about if I stay in the car and my husband does that? Your <laughs> husband? You have a husband? Yeah. You could do that. Sure, let him do it. You know, we shifted across country, so maybe the door did get loose when it was... Um, yeah, or oh, this could have fallen off the truck in like, you know... Yeah. Arizona. <laughs> no, it was, it was inside one of those big trucks. 
The whole uh, I wouldn't. I bet either that or the, they yeah. took it out and drove it around a little bit. Some, <laughs> yeah. Something happened. It's in a the classic trip. FOT situation. Okay, what fell is that? off truck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I suspect that even the alarm going on might be associated with this too. Uh, Everything yeah. is tied in together. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, and I'm sure that if you went to your dealer, yeah, and explain to them what you've told us and what we told you, yeah, and ask them to check the passenger side doors for tightness or whatever. Yeah. They might be able to find it. Oh, they it. may be able to just adjust the latches on those doors uh-huh. and solve your problem. I sus- and I suspect it's the passenger front door. Oh. I, I do, too. Because no one's ever used the other door. I okay. agree with that. I, not that. I mean, I had no reason for thinking it. I just felt it. Oh, good. <laughs> See you, Christina. I think you're right. Thanks so much. Hey, good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, look. There I was sitting the other day reading the Chronicle of Higher Education. You know, I do that all the time. And I was I was looking for a job, because frankly, I need one. Yeah, yeah, you. I've, I've got to get out of the house. <laughs> and listed here is, is a job that I I almost didn't believe. Fordham University. I mean, Fordham University is a pretty well known, prestigious. prestigious place. Yes, and they have, you know, when, when you get to be a real high muckamuck, you get an endowed chair. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, they, at Fordham University, they have an endowed chair in literature. And they're advertising for someone to fill, to fill this the chair, chair so yeah. to speak. Now, what is the chair called? I mean, it's obviously, it's named after the person who gave the money to endow it. Get this. The Thomas Malarkey Chair in <laughs> Literature. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> The malark. I mean, how can you, in good, how you go to a, a little faculty meeting? Well, what's what's your job? Well, I'm the malarkey chair in literature. Even <laughs> it might as well be the Thomas Malarkey chair in BS. Bull feathers. <laughs> Bull feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, I love it. Well, I think you should apply for the job. I did already <laughs> because I think you're an ideal candidate. <laughs> my, my my, they have my resume. Oh, I'm sure. I haven't heard from them yet, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> now, don't forget, if you have anything interesting for my brother to read, send it to him at Good Mail Division, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our fair city. Matt 02238. Or you can email him stuff from cartalk.com. I can hardly wait. If you want to talk to us, the number is one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. That's a lot of numbers, you know? <laughs> Talk while I catch my breath. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Bob in Sandy, Utah. Hi, Bob. We have a little disagreement uh, with my mother's car with my brother-in-law. Uh, okay, we got a mother, a yeah, brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. This is, and... a, this is a new one. Well, usually we have uh, husband and wife, uh, <laughs> our parent and child. Brothers-in-law are new to us, but we will do our best to apply the general rules. Okay, great. Of, uh, yeah. Well, between my mother and my brother-in-law, they've had several Nissans, and uh, my brother-in-law insists that the heater doesn't blow hard enough, and he insists that his mechanic told him it's because they're made in a country where it never gets cold enough in the winter to worry about heaters. Uh-huh. But I've seen those NPR or, or public TV shows with the snow monkeys, so I know it snows over there. Yeah. But uh, his mechanic told him that he could change the ductwork under the dash to put in some bigger tubes for just a few hundred dollars so it would blow more air. Mm. Well, I don't well, think the mechanic could do that, can he? Okay, well, first of all, how does this guy get to be your brother-in-law? Well, he married my sister. Married your sister. There are various ways to become a brother-in-law, right? Right. He could be the brother of your wife. He could be. That would still be a brother-in-law. But this right. guy married your sister. Right. Okay, now, how, what's your mother got to do with this? She well, I think she birthed my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, this guy would not be your brother-in-law. Exactly. Ah, I got it. <laughs> and whose car is it? It's it's, it's it's. Well, it's my mother's car, so that's how we ended up. All right. in the oh, oh, okay. That's how she gets And involved. mom, is, is mother dissatisfied with the amount of heat, or is, is, is this seed planted? Well, I think my brother-in-law thinks she is. He thinks oh. she is. So he's planted the seed. Yeah. I mean. It would be, I think, very difficult to put new ductwork under there in any kind of car 
Nissan well, whatever. I thought that might be true because there's, there's uh, no room they for could anything. They put a glove box in. You could put a glove exactly. In, let alone a bigger tube. So I think your brother-in-law is nuts, as is the mechanic who told you he was going to do this for a couple of hundred, hundred bucks. <laughs> Whether or not fans don't blow hard enough because they come from countries where it doesn't get cold enough, there is some truth to that. Because back in the older days, we had the same problem with Italian cars, with British cars, where it does get cold, but not cold like it gets in certain places here. And as a result, when they put in heater boxes, they think that they're adequate, but they're nowhere near adequate. I drove around no, for they many years. No, they never thought they were adequate. They didn't care that they were inadequate. <laughs> they put them in and they said, we know you're not going to get enough heat, but if well, you want to no. be seen driving around in a Fiat Sport Spider, that's it. This is one of the you'll prices have to you have tough to it out. But they, they were adequate for where they came from. And moreover, they didn't think those cars would even run in the winter. So the fact that they ran, <laughs> right. period. Don't, you don't have to worry about the heater because it'll never from. start in the winter anyway. It's like uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. He said, don't worry about being afraid of, of the fall. He <laughs> says, you'll be dead before you hit the water. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> and, and, I mean, uh, if, if your mother-in-law is not unhappy with it, is, is your brother-in-law, is this the first foray into, uh, what do you Familial call it? Familial relationships? No, 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 his first foray into the supernatural. <laughs> In other words, is he is he a complete well, wacko? I, I, my brother, my brother has a brother-in-law like this. <laughs> has well, this brother-in-law ever been taken aboard the mother ship? I'm going to have to ask him. Uh, yeah, I would he ask might, him. He might, I he think might he's nuts. If experience. if anything, a, a higher temperature thermostat is probably the answer. But if your mother isn't complaining, tell this guy to mind his own business and leave his <laughs> sister alone. Yeah, and I suspect what his mechanic would probably do is not change the duct work, but but somehow. Uh, uh, alter the operation of the blend door so that it mixes in less air from less outside air, which is not a good thing to do because you can contaminate the air inside uh, by having it recirculated too much and actually have uh, carbon monoxide poisoning or oxygen deprivation or whatever. Don't let them mess with it. If there's not enough heat and, a, and, buy a, another car. and the correct thermostat won't fix it, then buy another car. That's right. Buy a good American car with good heat. <laughs> Maybe you should just buy a heavier coat. Oh, or a heavier coat. Right, try buttoning his coat. Give him a pair of socks for Christmas and tell him to shut up. <laughs> See you, Bob. <laughs> plug into the, the, glow, the uh, cigarette lighter. Right. Those that's electric right. socks. Those electric socks. <laughs> hey, that's an idea. It is an idea. Why didn't Volkswagen ever think of that back in the 60s? <laughs> hey, thanks for calling, Bob. Okay, bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Well, it's happened again. You've blown off another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman and our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Key West Conch Colada and Cocoa Butter Cotillion, is John Bugsy Lawler. Really? Yeah, he's back. Our public...